Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very unusual type of a galaxy known as UCD or Ultra Compact Galaxy. In this video you're going to discover where they may have come from and how all this relates to the evolution of the universe. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And I wanted to start this video right here. This is actually probably the most famous galaxy as of 2019, except for, of course, our own galaxy. This is M87. This is what it may look like if simulated in Space Engine, although a more realistic image is right here taken by Hubble. That's the M87 galaxy. That's its super powerful, very long um, astrophysical jet. And if you forgot what this galaxy is all about, that's the image of the black hole in the middle of that galaxy that we were able to finally take a few years ago and that was released to us in 2019. But what does M87 have to do with anything? Well, actually, it's related to the paper that I discovered very recently where the scientists uh, used various simulations of M87 and the Milky Way galaxy being really, really close together. In other words, here is kind of what they simulated. They had the um, M87 galaxy in the middle, that's the, I guess, somewhat realistic representation of what it looks like, although possibly not as bright as here, and then we have the Milky Way galaxy orbiting around it. And they ran the simulation enough time to represent roughly around 300 million um, years, and they discovered something unusual. For the most part, because of the so-called tidal effects, although more specifically here it would be known as tidal stripping, the Milky Way galaxy will lose most of its stars and will lose most of its mass, roughly around 90% of all of the stars, and what will stay behind is the central region of the galaxy only. And they relate this to something we've been discovering in the night skies in the last 20 years or so. Here's actually one example. Can you kind of guess what you're looking at here? Well. It's actually a galaxy. It's a very, very unusual galaxy known as UCD or Ultra Compact Galaxy. These UCDs, um, just as the title suggests, are a collection of stars very, very, very tightly packed together in a um, usually space of roughly around 200 light years. Just to give you a bit of a comparison, the distance between Sagittarius, a star in the middle of our galaxy, and the location where the Sun is kind of is, is 27,000 light years roughly around 130 times more far away. So if you were to imagine this really, really small part of the galaxy, that's how big the UCDs or how small the UCDs are. Here's another image from Hubble. This is the most famous of these galaxies and the one used in this paper known as um, UCD3. This galaxy is famous because it's the most dense galaxy we've ever discovered. In th this region right here, that's roughly around 150 light years across, there are something like 200 million, if not more, uh, masses of the sun. So, just to kind of give you another perspective here, let's go back to our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and find a um, typical globular cluster here, which are usually a very, very highly packed collection of stars. And here, they're usually really easy to see because they're typically the brightest objects in the night skies. And this globular cluster, that's an example of a very large collection of stars in the same volume. Now imagine this, but increased by several times, with an extremely massive black hole in the middle. And so unlike a typical global cluster, UCD would be very, very big in size, and the actual mass would be much higher as well. But in terms of the density of the stars and the collection of the stars, it would probably resemble this as well. Now, there's another unusual property of these UCDs that global clusters don't have. They all seem to have extremely massive black holes in the middle, actually comparable to a typical supermassive black hole in our own galaxy. For example, in the middle of UCD1, the uh, mass of the black hole is roughly around 3 to possibly 3.5 million masses of the Sun, and that's very comparable to the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star right there which is roughly around 4.3 um, million masses of the Sun. So what's really strange about these compact galaxies is that they have a very large number of stars, very close together, with a tremendously large supermassive black hole in the middle. 
The average distance between stars here is about 25 times closer than the nearest star to us, and so roughly around 0.2 light years away from each other. So all of these stars are interacting with one another, all of their star systems are probably affecting one another as well, so it's a very interesting place. But the most interesting part, of course, is the supermassive black hole. And for most of these UCDs, the actual black hole in the middle is normally around 18 to 20% of the total mass of the galaxy. And that is extremely high. Because if you ever think about the other galaxies with their supermassive black holes, the mass is usually not as high as the mass of the entire galaxy. As a matter of fact, the total mass of our own galaxy dwarfs the mass of the supermassive black hole in the middle. So something unusual is happening with these UCDs that makes them very interesting and also very unique opportunities for us to study how the universe may have evolved. And that's of course precisely what this paper did. They assumed that all of these UCDs were formed from much larger galaxies through the so-called effect of tidal stripping. And that's of course the effect of the tidal forces from a larger galaxy where the smaller galaxy starts losing its mass starts losing all of its stars on the outskirts and only the central region remains while becoming more and more dense at the same time. And having simulated this with the Sagittarius A star and the Milky Way while orbiting a hypothetical galaxy similar to the M87 here, they realized that that's exactly what happened to the Milky Way. It lost roughly around 90% of its mass on the outskirts, but the central region remained, and the central region actually became very dense. And here we're going to cheat a little bit and do this by erasing these outer regions of the galaxy, only leaving the central region behind. So basically, think of it as an accelerated tidal stripping. So the result was something like this. This was the leftover of the Milky Way if it orbited a very massive galaxy. The tidal stripping literally turned the Milky Way into a hypothetical UCD galaxy. And here what you would have is of course a very dense region with a very very massive black hole in the middle and of course a lot of luminosity which is exactly what we're observing from galaxies like UCD3 um, roughly around 15 million light years away from us. At the same time, the paper mentions that a lot of these UCDs have very old metal-rich stars, which also suggests that they were sort of part of the much larger, much older galaxy before. And so all of this, of course, suggests that one day maybe the Milky Way will also turn into what's known as a UCD, while at the same time, uh, it's very possible that the solar system, which is of course on the outskirts of the galaxy, might get kicked out and stay as a kind of a intergalactic star system that travels by itself without a proper galaxy to be attached to. And because we've detected different types of UCDs um, with different masses of the supermassive black hole in the middle, the scientists explain this through the tidal stripping of um, different original galaxies. So for example, a galaxy similar to Milky Way will produce a UCD that has a very high mass in the middle and very high supermassive black hole. Whereas a smaller galaxy, like for example, the nearby large Magellanic Cloud, which is a dwarf galaxy, uh, might produce something smaller. And we've also detected some UCDs that do have smaller mass. But in the end, it all comes down to their origin. And it seems that the origin is really because of this very peculiar but very well known effect to us known as tidal stripping. This is of course a very similar effect to how the rings around Saturn are formed. This is also something that uh, results from tidal effects. But in galactic terms, it seems that it produces this, or actually this. A very dense, very compact, very massive and spectacularly bright galaxy that sort of acts and looks like a global cluster, but at the same time is a lot larger and a lot more mysterious to begin with. This also might of course represent the future of the Milky Way if it ever attaches to a larger galaxy, but it's very likely that before that ever happens, the collision with the Andromeda galaxy will transform Milky Way into something completely different as well. Nevertheless, I think it's a really brilliant study, a very interesting discovery, and most importantly explains the universe a little bit more and allows us to understand what happens to some galaxies as they grow older and as they evolve. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about our universe, various galaxies, and this unusual newly discovered type of galaxies known as UCD. As we discover more, I'll make sure to make a follow-up video, so do come back, 
and maybe even subscribe so that you get notified about the future videos. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.